They won't come out of their dressing rooms. What? Why? They're fighting. Who's going to open the show? Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. See what I mean? Yeah, they won't come out of their dressing rooms. There's a lot of drama going on here today. Yeah, normally, you know, they're friends. I don't know, something's going on. Something big. Listen, could you get over here and mediate as soon as possible? Thanks. They're sending someone over. Cut to Kirby. Hey there, everyone. In case you don't know who I am, I know, not a familiar face. I'm Kirby Minnick, also known as Kirby is the Boss on YouTube. You can go check it out. I put out all kinds of really awesome Christian content. Hey there, YouTube. My name's Kirby is the Boss. Welcome to my room. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to give all of you some tips, some tricks. Loyal friends are hard to come by. Memes truly are my love language. Yes, I stink and love memes. I'm a meme queen. But the reason why I'm here today is because I want to talk about drama. You're welcome. For the entire month, we're gonna cover friendship drama, we're gonna cover family drama, we're gonna cover more than friendship drama. At some point in our lives, we are going to experience friendship drama. Maybe someone didn't invite you to their birthday party or you heard your friends talking about you behind your back. When I was in middle school, I wanted to audition for the talent show with my best friends. We all agreed to do it and at the last minute, they all bailed on me. And I was so hurt by that. I really had to work on my own heart on forgiveness them because I cared way more about my friends than trying to be right. So I kind of want to dive into that topic today of what it looks like to forgive, to bring peace to a situation, and why friendships truly matter. Today in the kitchen, we are making a friendship drama sundae. Step one, start with two scoops of ice cream to represent two best friends, together forever. Two scoops of BFF. Step two, let's heat things up and pour on the hot fudge. Crank up the heat as high as you can because this hot, hot fudge will test this friendship real good. Burn, baby, burn. Step three, as the fudge cools, gossip about the Sunday. Write mean things about your Sunday in a note and pass it to someone other than the Sunday. Make sure the Sunday sees you giggling and passing the note. Step four, Host a birthday party and do not invite your Sunday. Pour salt into the wound by laughing about it and pouring salt onto your Sunday. <laughs> Step five. Since more people have been added to this drama, add more scoops. As the drama spins out of control, so should the amount of scoops in your dish. Your friendship was based on ice cream, but by this point you can add any and all scoops. Don't discount your canned meats. Step six, top your friendship with fake apologies. Sorry. The idea is to make your friendship someday look pretty, but taste pretty awful. Use inedible things like glitter, thumbtacks, or glue. Step seven, ask your Sunday, are we still friends? Are we still friends? If the answer is no, complete with cherry. If the answer is yes, find an item the Sunday values most. Break it in front of the Sunday. Insist it was an accident when it clearly wasn't. Then complete with cherry. Build your friendship Sunday with this kind of drama and it will quickly melt into bitterness soup. For a friendship Sunday without all the drama, follow this recipe. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Forgiveness is the cherry on top of any good friendship. 
All right, I'm here from the law offices of Henderson and Tate, and I will fight to find you peace. You deserve mediation. I don't need mediation. He's the one that needs mediating. Uh, if anyone needs mediation, it's you. Got a dispute with a longtime friend and or coworker? The law offices of Henderson and Tate can resolve any conflict. Tell her to apologize. Whatever you apologize. I thought we were friends. I didn't go to night school to get my degree in arguments. I got my degree in peaceful resolution, and I believe I can make you friends again. Yeah, that'd be a Christmas miracle. You're getting nothing but coal for Christmas this year. What did you say? You heard me. Enough! The first step in restoring a broken friendship is to identify where the breakdown is so we can use forgiveness to kick that breakdown in the teeth. There, that is where the breakdown is. You're a breakdown. Uh, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Call me Tom. Tom Tate of Henderson and Tate. Tom, she just called me a breakdown. If we're supposed to be restoring a friendship, is name calling allowed? Name calling's out of bounds. It's true though, he's the one who started this whole fight. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Nuh uh. Yeah, huh? I've got my work cut out for me, but that's all right. I get paid by the hour. While I teach these two a little bit more about talking with respect, check this out. I'm full of respect. I was born respectful. Stay in your. You know, many things can make or mar a friendship. How would you react to this next scene? What is it? Well, it's kind of a secret. Oh, you know, you always can trust me. You won't tell anyone? Not a soul, promise. Well, my father's got a new job. I may have to move away, I'm afraid. Oh, Joe, gosh, I'm sorry. So am I. But, but please don't tell anyone because it's not definite yet. Cross my heart, I won't say a word. You won't tell so, but I just heard the most terrible thing. Joe's father lost his job, mm. and they have to get out of the house right away and move to another town. We haven't got enough to eat anymore. Oh. That escalated quickly. I mean, if you were to really look at what she did, how she went into the next room and was telling everybody all about Joe's secret, when we think about friendship, we want loyalty, we want trust, and I don't know if she really makes the cut. What do you think? How would you feel if you found out that your best friend went around and told everybody your secrets? Oh my gosh, I need to tell you the biggest secret and you can't tell anybody. Oh my gosh, yes, you can tell me anything. I am here for you, girl. What's up, what's up? I think that I like Josh and I don't know what to do. Okay, trust me, I won't tell anyone, all right? Hey, Josh! Guess what I just heard? Are you kidding me? Are you the kind of person that when someone shares something with you, you go around and tell everybody? These are things that make or break a friendship, so we should consider them. Okay, Ricky, why don't you read your letter first? Thank you, I would love to go mm -hmm. first. Jamie, when someone gets a new hat, the polite thing to do is to comment on the new hat. Sometimes it feels like you are selfish. Sincerely, Ricky. Now, Jamie, why don't you read your letter? Ricky, I have other friends too. Just because I choose to sit next to other people at lunch doesn't mean we're not friends anymore. It feels like you don't want me to have any other friends and that's selfish. Warmest regards, Jamie. Now, Jamie, do you understand why Ricky thinks you're selfish? I guess so. Is that hat new? No, it's old. So when were you wearing a new hat? Last month. I missed that. And Ricky, do you understand why Jamie thinks you can be a little possessive? I don't think she used those exact words. It was implied. Do you think Jamie was saying nothing about your hat to hurt your feelings on purpose? No. No, I don't. And Jamie, do you think Ricky's trying to hurt your feelings when he wants to sit with you at lunch? No, that would be ridiculous. Mistakes were made, but that doesn't mean you're mean people. You both get a little something called the benefit of the doubt. Don't assume the worst, assume the best of your best friend. That's a good point. Tom, I think our friendship is restored. Not quite yet. There's one more thing this friendship needs before I can give it the official Henderson and Tate seal of approval. What's that? Forgiveness. Forgiveness brings peace and peace restores all things. Jamie, will you forgive me for getting all crazy about your lunch plans? As long as you can forgive me for not paying attention to your interests. Deal. Yay for peace! Want to grab lunch? Yeah. Great. Wait, there's some paperwork you need to fill out if you don't mind before you make any lunch plans. There you go. So all of this? All of it. The word peace is common in most languages. People can talk about peace treaties or times of peace. It means the absence of war. 
And in the Bible, the word peace can refer to the absence of conflict, but it also points to the presence of something better in its place. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And in the New Testament, the Greek word is erene. The most basic meaning of shalom is complete or whole. The word can refer to a stone that has a perfect whole shape with no cracks. It can also refer to a completed stone wall that has no gaps and no missing bricks. Shalom refers to something that's complex with lots of pieces that's in a state of completeness, wholeness. It's like Job who says his tents are in a state of shalom because he counted his flock and no animals are missing. This is why shalom can refer to a person's well-being. Like when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he asked about their shalom. The core idea is that life is complex, full of moving parts and relationships and situations. And when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Life is no longer whole. It needs to be restored. In fact, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So Solomon brings shalom to the unfinished temple when he completes it. Or if your animal accidentally damages your neighbor's field, you shalom them by giving them a complete repayment for their loss. You take what's missing and you restore it to wholeness. The same goes for human relationships. In the book of Proverbs, to reconcile and heal a broken relationship is to bring shalom. And when rival kingdoms make shalom in the Bible, it doesn't just mean they stop fighting. It also means they start working together for each other's benefit. This state of shalom is what Israel's kings were supposed to cultivate, and it rarely happened. So the prophet Isaiah, he looked forward to a future king, a prince of shalom. And his reign would bring shalom with no end. A time when God would make a covenant of shalom with his people and make right all wrongs and heal all that's been broken. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of Irene. Remember, that's the Greek word for peace. Jesus came to offer his peace to others. Like when he said to his followers, my peace I give to you all. The apostles claimed that Jesus made peace between messed up humans and God when he died and rose from the dead. The idea is that he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and their creator. This is why the Apostle Paul can say Jesus himself is our Irene. He was the whole complete human that I am made to be but have failed to be. And now he gives me his life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers are now called to create peace. Paul instructed local churches to keep their unity through the bond of peace, which requires humility and patience and bearing with others in love. Becoming people of peace means participating in the life of Jesus, who reconciled all things in heaven on earth, restoring peace through his death and resurrection. So peace takes a lot of work because it's not just the absence of conflict. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. And that's the rich biblical concept of peace. So what is it that we do when we have friendship drama? Well, the first thing that we should do is stop and talk. We shouldn't avoid the issue because that just musters up more grudges and anger towards people. When we take the time to actually confront the person and confront the issue, let them know how we're feeling, how it affected us, and we seek to restore and bring peace to that situation, my friends, that's when we're going to see uh, communion take place. That's when we're going to see the body of Christ at work. That's when we are going to see us bringing that same shalom that Jesus brought when he forgave us. I don't know if you remember this, but we are also sinners and we need that grace and we need that mercy extended to us. One thing that I love that Paul says in the Bible, and if you don't know who Paul is, he is one of the greatest apostles to ever live. And he wrote this to us while he was in prison. In the book of Colossians chapter three, verses 13 through 14, he says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And verse 14, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Now that very first part right here, it says make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. When we keep that into perspective, all that we have done and all of that mercy and grace that God has shown us, it's so easy to extend that to other people. 
people. Because at the end of the day, when we think of God's mercy, we want people to experience that peace and that wholeness. So let's extend that to other people, seek to restore those friendships, and to be the first one to extend forgiveness, because that will lead to peace. Mm -hmm. yep. This is a lot of paperwork, Tom. Well, you focus on the paperwork, and I'll do the outro. We fight for you so you can fight for your friendships. Ever been injured by a friendship or hurt by someone else? Call for peace. Your friendships need less drama and more forgiveness. Okay, initial there. And there. Mm -hmm. And there. Mm -hmm. There we go, right. good. Can we say a catchphrase now? We're all contractually obligated to say it together. Here we go. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride! ride. Tom, thank you so much for helping us become friends again. Yes, thanks, great. Tom. Of course. Yeah, and if you want to watch another great episode where we met our evil twins, uh, click this video right here. I've seen them in court before. They're not very nice. Mm. Uh, no. I'm out of here. Oh. Pleasure doing business with I, you. Oh, you yes. too. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Such Happy a firm handshake. Yeah. I'll leave my cards in the lobby. Oh, okay. <laughs>